Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the origin of a species. So let's get started. The word species has a lot of meanings and concepts. The biological meaning of a species is defined as a group of living things that are able to breathe and produce offspring who can also breathe. Because all living things are made in such an interesting and complicated way, not all living things are able or likely to breathe. And sometimes, even if they do, the offspring that results are not strong enough to survive or able to have their own offspring. Now, according to this definition, you will expect gene flow or not gene flow between species. This means mating within a species or not mating between a species. Now, let's talk about what keeps a species apart. Reproductive isolation is the barrier that keeps a species apart. There are two types of barriers. The barrier before fertilization, which is called the prezygotic barrier, and the barrier after fertilization, which is called the postzygotic barrier. Now let's take a look at the prezygotic barriers that affect the species. Let's just start with the habitat isolation. Species occupy different habitats. Therefore, they do not even have the opportunity to mate. An example of these are insects using different plants in the same area, or the water dwelling versus the terrestrial gutter snake. The second isolation is temporal isolation. Occurs when members of two species occupy similar habitats but breed at different times. Thus, gene flow between populations is impeded, even when these species' populations occupy the same habitat within the same geographic area. An example could be the different species of frogs. They may share the same pond for reproduction but will not hybridize because they use the pond at different times of the year. Similarly, differences in the flowering times of two closely related species of plants can keep them from being cross-pollinated by one another. Behavioral isolation results from differences in courtship or mating behavior that keeps members of different species from mating. Even when they inhabit the same geographic area, these barriers often consist of special signals or elaborate behaviors that are used by members of the species to attract or recognize and accept mates. Examples include scholarship displays, such as with the blue-footed boobies, pheromones, chemical signals, and the songs of birds. Behavioral isolation specifically prevents mating between different species and therefore also prevents the formation of a cycle. It is a pre-mating isolating barrier as well as a pre isolating barrier. We have now the mechanical isolation. Mechanical differences prevent the successful mating. Even if there are not temporal or behavioral cues to keep individuals of two species from hybridizing, it may simply be physically impossible for mating to take place. Mechanical isolation occurs when two species have significant anatomical differences that prevent them from mating. For example, many species of the fly genus Drosphilia are virtually indis indisguisable except for the difference in the male and female genitalia. Similar to the working of a lock and key, males cannot copulate successfully with females from the wrong species. Another example are the braid baina, which shells in opposite directions. Now we have the gametic isolation. Differences in eggs and or sperm prevent fertilization. When the gametes of one species cannot fuse with the gametes of another species to form a cycle, gametic isolation has occurred. This is a kind of lock and key isolating mechanism in which, despite successful mating or pollination, hybridization will not occur because the gametes of one species functions poorly with the gametes or reproductive tract of another species. See Sea urchins provide a good example of this type of reproductive isolating barrier. Many sea urchins species live in sympathy within the same geographic region and shed their gametes at the same time, not temporal isolation, but remain evolutionarily distinct. In this case, the formation of hybrid zygotes is prevented because the surface protein of the ovule, the lock, and the sperm or male gametes, the keys, of different species do not fit together. So now that I have shown you the prezygotic barriers, now I'm going to talk about the postzygotic barriers that affect the species. Let's start with reduced hybrid viability. Fertilization occurs but hybrid dies in development or in the environment. 
When hybrid zygotes are formed, they frequently die at some point during their development due to genetic incompatibility between the two parent species. This isolation mechanism, known as the hybrid inviability, prevents the genomes of the two species from mixing. In this way, the gene flow between the two populations is impeded. One example of hybrid inviability occurs in the four frog genus Rana. Interbreeding between some species of Rana results in the formation of hybrid tadpoles. But the tadpoles die before they become reproductive adults, thus the population corresponding to different species remain genetically isolated. Another example is the Ensatina salamander. Now let's talk about reduced hybrid fertility. In some cases, hybrid zygotes successfully develop into adults, but the adult individual do not produce viable gametes. This isolating barrier, known as the hybrid sterility, restricts the amount of genome mixing that can occur across two species. A classic example of a sterile hybrid is the mule, the offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. All mules typically are sterile, however, within other taxonomic groups, hybrid sterility is displayed in only one sex. For example, in the fly genus Drosphilia, crosses between different species produce sterile male hybrids and female hybrids that usually are fertile. When hybrid sterility affects one sex preferentially, it is generally the heterogametic sex, the sex with two different sex chromosomes, that is sterile, while the homogametic sex, the sex with a matching pair of sex chromosomes, is fertile. This is known as the Halden's rule. In most mammals and insects, including flies and males, are heterogametic and the females are homogametic. Birds and reptiles are the opposite. That is, the males are homogametic and the females are heterogametic. Now let's talk about hybrid breakdown. In some cases, the first generation of hybrids are fully viable and fertile, but their progeny has reduced fitness. This isolating barrier, known as hybrid breakdown, limits the amount of genome mixing that will occur between two populations. A proposed explanation for hybrid breakdown is that different species evolve different combinations of genes, or gene assemblages, that work together synergistically to create maximum levels of fitness, because individuals in the F1 generations inherit these complementary assemblages, they exhibit fitness levels that are comparable to those in the purebred species. In subsequent generations, however, recombination breaks up the assemblages, producing incompatible gene association, resulting in reduced fitness. Interdial copepods and the Pacific coast exhibit hybrid breakdown. The F1 hybrids can have fitness levels comparable to purebred members of the parental species, but the F2 generation is frail and exhibits greatly reduced potential for survival and reproduction. Now let's talk about other species concepts. The species concepts are used usually depending on the type of question asked. Other species concepts include morphological species concepts. Individuals with a similar morphology are a single species. Works on sexual and asexual species, but it can be subjective. Ecological species concepts. The ecology of individuals define the species. Example, food, shelter, psychology. Works on sexual and asexual species, but need to have a very clear understanding of the ecology of organisms. Phylogenetic species concepts. Difference at the genetic level defines the species. Works on sexual and asexual species, but needs to define the degree of difference allowed and still be a single species. That's all for today. Thank you.